Here's a state with a rich past, several thousand years of history, and a strategic geographic location in the heart of the Mediterranean, which have earned this archipelago the desires and then occupation of many different powers over the centuries. Welcome to Malta. Here, the Phoenicians, the Greeks, the Carthaginians, and the Romans have all come, not to mention the Knights of St. John, Napoleon, or the British Empire, to name a few, and experience and influences that are felt as much in the architecture as in the local culture. The Maltese language testifies to the Arab occupation for several centuries, even while Italian and the language of Shakespeare are also quite well represented. Located between Malta and Gozo is the charming little island of Comino. Gozo is the second most important island of the archipelago and is also worth a visit for a stay or even a small day trip, taking one of the ferries that connects the islands. Its capital, Rabat, is dominated by the citadel, which served as a checkpoint for the Knights of St. John against potential invaders. When you arrive, you find a large square with the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Assumption, built by the famous Maltese architect Lorenzo Gaffa. Gozo also offers tourists a historical treasure. The megalithic temples of Gantia date back to 5000 BC. In all, the Maltese archipelago contains three UNESCO World Heritage Sites, and the cultural capital of Valletta is one of them. It owes its name to Jean Parisot de la Valette, 49th Grand Master of the Hospitallers of the Order of St. John of Jerusalem, who ordered its construction in 1566 after having driven back the Ottomans. The Knights of the Order, or Knights of Malta, have thus left their mark on the archipelago. Valletta, with its Baroque style, and which is also the center of the island's commercial and cultural life, was one of the first cities in the world to be built according to a Hippodamian plan. Walking through the streets, one can only admire the architectural richness of the city. This telephone booth is not the only symbol of the passage of the British, since in the middle of the Place de la République, the statue of Queen Victoria keeps an eye on the building of the National Library. Founded as a public library during the last years of the Order of St. John, the building was designed by an architect of Polish origin, Stefano Itar. Here, many administrative documents of the Order are archived, and many other treasures collected over the centuries. A Baroque gem that reflects the heritage of the knights in Valletta is St. John's Co-Cathedral. The contrast between its facade and the richness of its interior leaves no one indifferent. Two masterpieces by Michelangelo Merisi de Caravaggio, known as Caravaggio, are preserved there. Speaking of masterpieces, head to Musa, flagship project of the program Valletta 2018 European Capital of Culture. Housed in the former Auberge d'Italie, here is a museum that generates its energy needs from renewable sources. It illustrates the arts, ranging from the Renaissance to the modern era. Maltese artists are also represented there with great pride. The permanent exhibition is sometimes enriched by temporary exhibitions, as here with these 13 master paintings from a private collection, which entered the national collection on a long-term loan basis. It's a journey through remarkable works of art, ranging from the end of the 15th century to the middle of the 18th century, presented in five thematic sections. The Triton Fountain also almost acts like a work of art. Located on the outskirts of the Valletta city gate, it consists of three bronze tritons supporting a large basin balanced on a base constructed of concrete and clad in travertine slabs. The fountain is one of the most important modernist monuments in the archipelago. On foot, by car, or even by bus, discovering Valletta means discovering unique landscapes. With stunning views over Grand Harbour, the lower Baraka Gardens are one of Valletta's most popular spots. Lush vegetation surrounds the neoclassical memorial erected in honor of Sir Alexander John Ball, a vice admiral. A close friend of Admiral Nelson, he drove the French army from Malta at the end of the 19th century. A 
opposite the gardens, the Siege Bell Memorial, a building built in honor of the 7,000 soldiers and civilians who lost their lives during the Second World War. Made up of a limestone tower, we find at its top a 10-ton bronze bell. It's this idyllic view that we'll keep in mind. Valletta, a festive and upscale city to discover.